And now, words of wisdom with Adam Carriker. If a bunch of midgets were to do the wave, would it be called a ripple? And with that, we welcome you to Fourth and Pain, the only pro wrestling show hosted by an NFL player. I want to dedicate the, that, that words of wisdom right to you and your family. Why are you bringing my family into I like your family. I met your brother. He's a wonderful individual. Oh, God. Wonderful sakes. individual. Helped us with our technology because you couldn't do it. So. Below the belt. Good lord. You got to admit, that's funny. That's good, clean humor I at your expense. When, at my. Whatever. <laughs> Welcome to Fourth and Pain, a Tuesday oh. edition. This is a downtrodden weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll here. He is the bully Redskins defensive end, Adam what? Character. What? What do you mean, what? what? We open the show, you take a shot at my family. How is that not? You're Bully Ray. That's who you are. You are Bully Ray Carroll. Except I don't walk about talking about how, talk about how I have huge calves and they're no bigger than a normal person's calves like him. Calvezilla, your calves are normal. They're not big. Uh, nothing about him is, well, he's a big dude, but nothing about him is, like, defined. Compared to you, everybody's small. I think that you need to keep that in perspective. Well, compared to you, everyone's like gigantic. Exactly. So, so you put us together, what do you have? An average show. We're giving you the best <laughs> average show of all time. That's our goal. <laughs> and we've reached it. Welcome to 4th and Pain, a Tuesday edition. Doing it every single day at noon on 4thandpain.com. Have lunch with us, will you? And while you're there, be sure to follow us on Twitter at 4th and Pain. And on Facebook, facebook.com slash what else? Fourth and pain. Right now, it's time to dial up Colorado like we always do about this time. It's time for a little bit of Peyton Pulse. And Adam, she is your wife, so you do the introductions. Well, first, this is fast becoming, I think, one of the favorite segments of our listeners. My trainer in the training room actually said to me, Her fourth and pain. You know, my favorite segment is actually the Peyton Pulse. So this is fast because we're one of our favorite, se- uh, favorite segments of our listeners. Did you know that, Chuck? I did not. That is outstanding. All right, all right. Well, let's get into that segment. Are you there, sweetie? Can you hear us? I am here, and I like to hear that I'm the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're going to be more popular than we ever could be. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Broncos look pretty good this weekend, so what is what is the word? What's the Peyton Pulse? Well, you know, in college right now, it's all about the front runners for the Heisman, like Gino and everybody. And, well, if the NFL had... I've been raised. I'm sure Peyton would be a candidate, um, especially after his weekend's performance. I think he was like 30 of 38. Um, he looked really good against their big rival, the Raiders. Um, <laughs> and they've lost to all undefeated teams, which actually says a lot about his team. Uh, a lot of people, though, are starting to question oh, does he have this spiral like he used to and all this stuff? And it's like, who cares? If he gets the ball there, it's all that matters. Have you seen Tebow throw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yahtzee. I love it. Good stuff, sweetie. Good stuff. I like it. <laughs> Angie Carricker, <laughs> as always, you are the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you so very much. You're Thank welcome. you, sweetie. Hey there, Adam. How's it going today? I'm doing all right. I understand. Better now. (laughs) I understand that uh, you made your way back into the gym at Redskins Park and attempted a little bit of a workout, man. How how did that go? I mean, it's been a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, it's been a while. Um, So I go in, and I'm just going to do some bench and some pull-ups and then, you know, do some close grip bench and some rows and maybe a little four-way neck and shrugs and delts and get out. It takes me 30 minutes to do this during the season, and it's not even that hard. So I go in and I do the bench and I do the pull-ups and I'm not even finished with the bench. And I just, I don't feel good and I'm tired and um, the, the room is moving more than it should be. And, you know, so I, I go to my strength coach. I'm like, you know, I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm completely lying. I don't have to go to the bathroom. I just want to go lay down because I'm about, I'm not feeling too good. Like, let me preface this by, and when, we, when I first got to Nebraska, you had to do a conditioning test, similar to what Albert had to do. Not the same exact thing, but the 300-yard shuttle. You had to run 50 yards down and back, uh, down and back was once you had to do three and it comes out to 300 yards and you have to do it i like i had a minute 15 or a minute 10 i didn't know that i was a freshman so i just ran as fast as i could so i ended up running like a db time which was like 48 50 seconds nice well it was nice the time was nice i get back i'm done I'm not feeling too hot i'm like man i remember thinking i don't know how in the world like could you get five minutes of rest you have to do it again i remember thinking to myself i have no idea how i'm going to do this again 
I sit down, I stand up, I go over to the garbage can, I proceed to just puke. And I'm like, okay, I probably got about four more minutes, get this out and I'll run again. Next thing I know, I am literally on the ground looking up at my head coach and everybody else who is looking down at me. And they're like, are you okay? How are you doing? I, I sit up and I look at the garbage can, huge dent in the garbage can. So apparently someone had fallen into it. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, right, coach, I have no idea how I'm gonna run that cycle. He's, and I, I couldn't even stand up, like I was so tired. So they brought the gator over to me. And there was another individual, he was actually, we called him Big Smooth. He was 6'6", 380 pounds, who the same thing happened to, freshman as well. And we both got carted off in the gator to the, to the training room. What's funny is my strength coach, he, he left, but the assistant strength coaches all stayed. And to this day, from my senior year to this day, when I talk, they'll still give me crap about that. So I'm in the weight room today, not doing a conditioning test, just, just lifting, not anything crazy. And I'm like, I've got that same exact feeling. And I'm like, I'm not passing out in here, and I'm not going to lay down in the weight room. So I grab my crutches, and I crutch myself, which, by the way, is kind of a workout in itself. Crutch myself back to the locker room, get in front of my locker room, and I just lay down. Guys are coming and going, and one guy goes, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I might not be in the best shape right now. So I get up, you know, I sit up, stand up. I'm feeling a little bit better. So I go to, back to finish my workout. The coach, who I told I was just going to the bathroom, you know, I'm like, okay, back in the bathroom. I finish my bench, and I do my close grip, and I'm going to do my rows, and I still just got, like, a little bit of neck and, and rear delt and all this stuff to do. And I'm sitting there, and he looks at me and goes, you look really white. I'm like, whiter than normal? He's like, yes, whiter than normal. <laughs> Uh, he's like, you look really pale. And I'm like, well, I really don't feel very good. The, the room's kind of moving more than it should. My stomach's kind of turning more than it should. He's like, why don't you just go home? Just call your wife, have her come get you. So I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And you got to, you got this is the ultimate me head right here. Like, I do not quit. I do not, do not give in. I do not, you know, I don't care. But I was not going to pass out. So I get up, I crutch myself back to the locker room, get to my locker. The media's now in there. Oh, um, dear. And I'm like, our brethren. I, I, I literally remember thinking to myself, I don't give a crap. I'm going to my locker and I'm laying down in front of that thing. So I just laid down and, you know, Tony Wyler, a PR guy, comes over. He's like, are you okay? You okay? You know, I'm trying to be the big tough guy. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just chilling. And then as soon as he walks around, I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> tr drinking my G2. And I finally sit up and stand up and my wife comes and gets me and I make my way home. But, dude, I have not felt that bad in about, what was that, my freshman year was like 13 years ago? Wow. Oh, it, it was bad. It was bad. It was, it was a very humbling experience. I'm a little out of shape. And of course, there are some other factors at play. I'm, I'm taking painkillers for my knee, you know, and and I hadn't eaten in a while, and you know, all these other excuses I can throw out there. But and, it was not yet, a fun morning. And yet here you are doing fourth and pain. That's a testament to the kind of character that you have. You I may bully that. me, but I think the world of you, sir. Well, I think the world of you too. If I ever told you, I only make fun of people I like. I already told you that. No, but it doesn't make it hurt any less. It, 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 it makes perfect sense honest. because no, honestly, you can ask you can ask my wife. She, um, if I don't make fun of you, it's for one of either two reasons. Either I don't like you, or I don't know that you can handle it. <laughs> Dude, I don't think that I've ever told you this story. Uh, last year, I do believe that uh, you were giving me grief in the locker room, and this was before Fourth and Pain came, <laughs> came about. So this, just if you're listening at home, know that there is a long history of uh, there is, there really perhaps is. a one-sided back and forth, if that oh, makes whatever. any sense. Anyway, you that. make fun of me. I walk away all dejected. About 30 seconds later, I made my way to the other end of the locker room, and I feel like these huge meaty paws come down on my shoulders and like, bah! <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm only kidding you because I like you. Dude, you about brought me to my knees because I was not <laughs> expecting that, and you have some <laughs> damn big hands. See, see, Eve, I was trying to tell you in my own loving way back then that that's my way of, you know, bonding with you. Well, look, I had to go to physical therapy to work out the knots in my shoulder after that. You killed me. Kill, fragile. For uh, Chile. Uh, that's for just Chile. kind of embarrassing. I would not have said that on the air. Yeah, man. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, uh, anyway. should, should we tell them about our new endeavor we're about to embark on every week, talking about something a little different here? I, I think that we should, uh, seeing as though we're about halfway through the segment. Uh, we've talked an <laughs> awful lot about professional football. That's your wheelhouse. That's my wheelhouse. But you came to me and said, Chuck, it's time to diversify. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit of college pigskin now. I actually watch more college football than I do pro football. I actually enjoy watching college football more than I do pro football. Number one, I shouldn't be watching pro football. I should be playing it. But 
number two, it's to me like if you lose a game, it's that much more of a bigger deal. Whereas, you know, the Super Bowl champs lost seven games last year and then they went on and won a Super Bowl. So to me, college football is just that much more exciting. So it's something I actually love to watch and talk about. Well, let's let's discuss that a little bit. Uh, you know, I think that the, the first thing that we need to talk about is uh, our top five. I think that that's where we should start. You know, there's the AP poll. There's the USA Today poll. There's the coaches poll. But frankly, the only true the pain poll. college football poll that matters exactly are going to be the Adam Carricker poll and the Chuck Carroll poll. So I got to ask you. Who is your number one in the country right now? As much, my daddy raised me to hate three teams. My daddy raised me to hate the New York Yankees, the Miami Hurricanes, because they beat Nebraska every year in the Orange Bowl, and for some unknown reason, the Alabama Crimson Tide. I have no problem. I was raised to hate those three teams. That being said, my number one team in the nation is Alabama. (laughs) And I seriously, to this day, can't stand Alabama. I still hate them. Uh, No real reason, just because my daddy raised me that way. But they are a really freaking good team. And they keep killing everybody they play. And well, it annoys the crap out of me. I, I have issue with a college program that puts anybody in the uh, in the game that has special needs. And, of course, I'm re- uh, referring to Forrest Gump. Heck of a return guy. <laughs> but in, in no means, you know, fit to play college football. So uh, shame on you. <laughs> and that was a true Alabama. story. <laughs> shame on you. Have you uh, ever read his book? He plays Nebraska in the Orange Bowl in that book. And he calls us a bunch of, not corn huskers, but corn effers. In the oh, book. Forrest. Forest. Um, My mama always said. My number. I have uh, Alabama also at number one. Oh, it's hard to pick. Players. It's hard to pick against Alabama at number one at this point. Until they're dethroned, they're going to be the number one. Well, the thing is, I didn't think they'd be number one, but they keep killing everybody. They lost like half their defense, a good portion of their offense. I can't even tell you anybody on their team. You know, unlike last year where they were fully loaded, and it's just like they just keep rolling. Number two for me, I've got Oregon. Annoying. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Oregon? Yeah, Oregon, number two. Good consensus. Strong football program. Um, I think, honestly, at this point, it's a little bit you know early to say, but we're talking about a couple of top BCS teams could be playing for the national championship. Absolutely. Um, I about went to Oregon. I loved Oregon. They were my second favorite college campus behind Nebraska. Oh, really? It is gorgeous. They have the best facilities. Nike's right there. So I can see why they get these, these top recruits and these fast guys and have really good teams every year. But my number two... I was going to put Oregon, but I put Florida State, and I'll tell you why. Because Florida State is a really good win against a really good Clemson team. And they kind of pulled away at the end. Number two, and once we get to the bowl games, Oregon kills everybody in the Pac-12. But once they get to the bowl games, they always seem to get pushed around a little bit. Ohio State in the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. Um, Oregon, they actually played pretty well against Auburn, I mean, Auburn. Um, but I just feel like they're almost too small, too fast. They need to get a little bigger. They get pushed around just a little bit. They were able to outspeed Wisconsin, who is about the opposite of them. Ultra big, ultra, I don't know what you want to say, slow, but not fast. And so I feel like they were just a little bit too quick for them. But I feel like when they play those other teams, they're just a little too small. So I, I have Florida State number two with that big win over Clemson. I have Oregon number three. Who's your number three? Uh, Florida State. We're just going to flip-flop gonna right flip-flop. there. flip-flop, okay. You know, and, and that's okay. Uh, you know, we'll see if they overtake. I'm not 100% sold on Florida State yet. Uh, obviously, growing up, uh, a Notre Dame fan, uh, like you have issue with Alabama, I have a big issue with Florida State. Just cannot stand the Seminoles. They've always struck me as cocky. Uh, and, and, you know, Coach Bowden, for all the great things that he did, he always just struck me as a smug man trying to wear those Oakleys well into his 70s. you got to retire the Oakleys once you've reached 55. And the man just still rocking style. What, with his leathery face, style. coaching football with his Oakley glasses. i got no love for Florida State. He just... Well, you, you guys ruined their season in 93. They were undefeated, had probably the greatest team in college football history. They come into your house, you guys beat them. Charlie Ward, the greatest offense. And I loved it. And then we should have beat them in the Orange Bowls, but the refs suck. Anyways, um, I, won't, I won't cry or whine about that anymore. Numero quattro. Childhood tears. Um, I have LSU. No. Well, I'm tempted to put them behind Georgia and South Carolina, also some of their SEC foes, but they start out the season so high – and they've had a couple of close games, and they played horrible against Towson, as, as I'm sure you're going to elaborate on. But I just feel like, at this point, I can't drop them out of the top five yet, unless they just keep playing poorly. And if they play poorly, they're going to get killed by Florida this weekend, so it won't even matter. Towson, Adam, 
Towson. That's all I have to say. That should have been a game that was 70-3 to three if that close. And right. they play them, what, within 12 points? You're right. I mean, that is that is unacceptable. And, frankly, they weren't all that impressive the week before. You know? Uh, they only beat Auburn by two, 12 to 12-10. Exactly. I mean, this, this is a team that, you know, for all the accolades that they're getting, this is a team that, despite being undefeated and, you know, solidly in the top 10, but despite the wins, they played so poorly, they've actually dropped in successive weeks in the polls, and deservedly so. I don't even have the Tigers in my top five for that very reason. I thought about doing that, but, I mean, they started out, I believe, number two. And they haven't lost, so until they lose, I, I wasn't going to drop them out yet. It doesn't mean they're just not playing up to their potential. While other well, if teams they don't, are, they don't deserve to be there. If they don't in the swamp, the swamp, I mean, they're going to get killed, so. Uh, my number four, I've got George. I'm sure Philip Daniels is going to like that pick. I mean, those dogs are looking strong this year. They got a great offense. They they can score them some points. They are they are racking it up, and uh, I'll round up uh, my my top five with South Carolina. They're right there. I have, I have South Carolina as well, simply because I think South Carolina is going to beat Georgia this weekend, and they're going to be there next week. So I just put them in there now. Yeah. Man. You know what uh, what I've kind of figured out here is that we're definitely going to need to have two segments for some college football because we are fresh out of time here, and we've only done the top five. Well, let, let's just quickly do our picks for this weekend. Okay. Let's Fair just enough. do it real quick, and next week we'll set aside more time. Matter of fact, you can pick along with us on fourthandpaint.com. We're going to put these very same games up there on today's show. You just go ahead and uh, cast your fan vote along with us. And uh, we'll have some fun. Uh, first game that we're picking, West Virginia at Texas. Adam, how do you see this one? It's going to be a basketball game. I mean, Geno Smith was 45-51, 6-56 with eight touchdowns last week. The dude had more touchdowns and incompletions. And Texas is top five in offense. It's going to be like 80-79. to 79. But I think West Virginia is going to eke it out. You? Uh, I actually like Texas in this high-scoring affair. I think that they're the better of the two teams. I think that uh, – Texas's defense is definitely going to be a little bit stiffer than that of Baylor. Uh, I think that that's going to pose a little bit of a problem for Geno Smith. Um, and, and again, West Virginia's defense, they just don't have any sort of answer. So you couple that together, I'm going to give the slight edge to Texas based primarily on the home field advantage. Next game, this one, near and dear to your heart, Ohio State hosting Nebraska. You get the honors. Um, you know, I, I, I looked at this. You know, not biasly, not because I'm a Nebraska guy and it's the greatest college in the history of the world. Uh, but I tried to be subjective, and I looked at Michigan State and who they've beaten and how close the games were. They've had some real close games, and Michigan State's a decent team. But I feel like Nebraska, if we don't fumble 42 times like we did against Wisconsin and try to hand the game away, and we still won. That's how good we are. If we don't fumble a lot and turn the ball over, I feel like we should go in there and eke out a close victory somewhere, probably low 20s, 24, 21, something of that nature. I'm sorry I'm picking against you. I'm going with Ohio State. Uh, I just, I don't know why. I don't feel like picking with you. I just, I, I can't do it. No, it's just like wrestling. You're always wrong, so it doesn't matter. Well, we'll see what happens. I think I'm going to be right on this one, nope. however. Uh, last, <laughs> believe me, there's absolutely no science behind got, my pick. we got two more just so you know. Uh, Georgia at South Carolina, my uh, game of the week. I'm going South Carolina in this one. I am too, pretty much. I kind of flipped a coin, and then I looked at who had the home field, and I just went with the home field because it's going to be a real even football game. And then the other thing is Georgia's really good offense. South Carolina's really good defense. You actually are more offensive minded. Obviously, I'm more defensive minded. I think the better defensive team will win and the home field advantage. Well, yeah, home field advantage in a game like this is key. I mean, just two powerhouses going uh, head-to-head. Always I'm going to air with, uh, with the home field. Uh, the last game that I was looking at is uh, Miami at Notre Dame at Soldier Field. I don't know if that was on your pick list, but, hey, man, I'm a Notre Dame guy, so I'm going to throw it out there. We'll throw it on there. Uh, Miami at Notre Dame. I know uh, we, we just spoke about Philip Daniels. Well, his son, Devaris, is just doing a bang-up job at, uh, at Notre Dame this year, and they have a linebacker by the name of Manti Teo, who was uh, in the high Trophy running well should be probably not a serious contender, but yeah. this this is a guy that has every sort of of quality that you could ever want in a player, right down to heart, soul, and ability. For this reason, uh, and the fact that Miami is not the U of old, I'm going with Notre Dame. Notre Dame, they're just a better team, plain and simple. Absolutely. All right, so uh, we're going to push pause on this. Come back on the other side. We're going to talk a little bit of wrestling. I do believe that uh, we're going to talk a little. Aces and eights. A little TNA, a little impact wrestling, and a little tease for next week, college football-wise. We're, we're going to talk about our Heisman watch, 
And we're also going to talk about something about the Heisman that annoys me just a little bit. But that'll be next week. But on the flip side, we'll talk a little wrestling. And uh, don't forget, coming up later this week, we're all going to have our pro picks with a very special electrifying guest. A guy that uh, I'm very excited about. I am, I'm absolutely elated about. All right. He's a guy. We're going to have him on. You're going to enjoy <laughs> He's a guy. it. This is, this is Fourth of Pay. We'll be right back.